Hi everyone and good morning. Amanda here. I just wanted to share with you guys a really quick and super simple way that you can work on executive functioning with your students, but this video is more in relation to um, sort of towards the end of an intervention that you're providing to your students, and this is more of an assessment to see what do your students know what did they learn over the course of time that you've been working with them on a strategy related to executive functioning? So this is specific to a strategy that I use with my students in my building. So for a lot of my students, um, honestly, I'm, I'm using this strategy with quite a few of my students from first grade through fifth grade. And uh, ideally, this was initially designed for my older students, you know, third, fourth and fifth grade students. But um, I wanted to still expose my younger students to it. So um, I'll show them the visual, we'll kind of talk and we'll break it down, kind of developmentally appropriate conversations based on the students and their age. But the idea behind the strategy came because, you know, as a special ed team in my building, we often would talk about our students and thinking about, you know, like, how can we help to make them more independent so that they're ready for middle school, that they're not relying so much on the teacher or a para or the special ed teacher to sort of, you know, do everything for them. and. You know, I realize that at no fault of our own, oftentimes in the elementary level, we overdo things for our students because we want to be helpful, we want to save time, um, so we'll plan ahead, we'll organize ahead, and we'll just have everything ready to go for our students. Um, but we really take sometimes a lot of the thinking and the planning process out for our students so that they can basically go from stage one, stop, to stage four, do, but they're missing the, um, the middle pieces, part two and three, where they have to think about it and plan and think about, you know, what are the steps that they need to do, organize themselves, gather their materials, and then do the activity. So for many of my students, I've been teaching them the strategy, and then I shared the strategy out with the special ed teachers, with the classroom teachers. I've shared it out with the parents of those students so that it's consistent and we're bridging the homeschool connection. And, um, you know, if you think about it, we're kind of exposing the child to the strategy in all fronts. So hopefully they're able then to be more independent and generalize the skill. So one thing that I was thinking as, you know, this year has been progressing is, you know, how can I assess what my students have learned and how can I gauge do they understand the strategy? Do they know what it means? And I came up last night with this really simple activity that I just wanted to share in terms of if you're trying to figure out how to do data collection and how to do assessments and um, like a post test with your students. And as I'm talking right now, it's making me think of sort of a pre-test activity that you can do with your students too that I did not do. Um, but I just thought of it in this moment. But anyway, so this is the strategy that I show my students. It's called Stop, Think, Plan, Do, and it's all based on, you know, executive functioning. So kind of a quick breakdown. Stop is teaching your students, stop what you're doing. Focus on, like, now, focus on the moment. So this really relates to more or less whole body listening when you think about it and getting your students to ask themselves, you know, are, am I ready to learn? Am I thinking about what's happening in the moment? Am I thinking about the activity, what the teacher is saying, the assignment? Stage two, thinking, is exactly that, thinking about what is the assignment asking me to do or what was the direction? What did the teacher ask me to do? So thinking, you know, if it's a math worksheet, an addition worksheet, okay, thinking about, okay, this is an addition worksheet, so I need to add the numbers. So basically just thinking in the moment related to what is happening, what was the directive, what's the task, what's their task that they're going to have to do. Number three is the planning stage, and this is really the big organization piece. And for this stage, I teach my students about the concept of hunting and gathering, letting them understand that, okay, plan ahead. So before you begin the activity, before you initiate your work, you need to plan and ask yourself, what materials do I need? So do I need a pencil, paper, colored pencils, crayons, scissors, you know, whatever it is. And then number four is do. So now that you have all of your materials, you came up with a plan, you understand what you're going to do first, what you're going to do second, how the project should look at the end to help you figure out what steps you need to do along the way. Once you've mastered that, now you're in stage four, which is do, which essentially just means begin the activity, start your work. So this um, activity I came up with, and I have a couple students that are digital student or uh, distance learning students, so DL students, you call them. And um, so that right now that means they're remote, they're at home participating in school. So on Fridays, I have my DL students and for those students, I have two students that I've really been focusing on executive functioning this year with them. And I was thinking, you know, every week that we have each other, um, we review our strategy. So I have like a physical copy of it in my office that I hold up and we go through the parts. And I've also 
done a lot of activities with the students on, on Google Documents, so Google Slides, where I created interactive slides with them. Um, I think I had like three or four, and each of them ties in executive functioning, and they have like an image of this visual that I showed you at the end, so they all always include like this visual, it includes a breakdown of each step. Um, and those are actually available on my Teachers Pay Teachers page, so if you're looking for ways to uh, work on executive functioning with your students and you want a fun, interactive way to do it, um, check out my Teacher Pay Teacher store, School Psych Manda G, all one word, and um, you can find a lot of my um, Google Drive activities are there, ready for download. And they focus on this strategy. So it teaches the students the strategy, it breaks down each step of the strategy, and then it has a few different activities where the students have to stop, think, plan, and like interact with the slide and move things around. Um, and some have like academic like bonus slides included. So just kind of a quick little way to show um, how you can make executive functioning fun for your students and interactive with Google Slides. But so this activity, I had my students complete with me on, um, in our Google Hangouts. So I would have the student, the student share their screen with me and then we would go through. And I was so proud of my kids because they genuinely on their own remembered the task. So the students for this activity, they need to look at the little images. So this is basically our strategy all cut up and moved around. And it says, can you remember the order of our four step strategy? Move the pictures in the below in the correct order. So basically the students would just move the images to show, okay, first to stop, then we have to think, then we plan, then we do. Then from here, I ask my students to take it a step further and I ask them to explain it to me. So um, kind of if you're scaffolding, this is the whole concept of this is scaffolding the task. So in the beginning, I was doing all of the teaching. Now I want them to show me what they know. So now they're teaching me what they know. So it's kind of the end level of scaffolding for the students and building that independence. So then from there, I would I ask the students, okay, well, what does stop mean? What does the light bulb mean? What does the clipboard mean and what does the pencil mean? And they explained the sort of definition of each image to me. So I was thinking, okay, well, how can I um, also assess them even more? So for this is an interactive, um, they have to click on the, the words and then type in the strategy. So they would type stop, think, plan, and then the last one do. And then from there they have this one, which is uh, it's this was meant for like a Valentine's Day themed activity for my students So for this one, it's an interactive activity where they have to look at the picture and then they have to come up with a plan How can they recreate the picture that I? Created and make it look exactly like mine. So um, for this one, it's stop think plan do Can you make a heart that looks just like mine before you begin stop and think share what your plan is out loud? What steps do you need to do first second, etc.? and make your heart in, in this open space um, next to mine, so the space to the right. So for this one, I had the students, before they started it, I had them out loud explain to me what they were doing. So the students would say, okay, so I need to make a heart, and then they would identify, I need to make it the color that yours is, and I need to put the words in. So I said, perfect. So I would ask them, you know, how do you make the heart? And then, so, Again, executive functioning, you're guiding the students, you're not doing it for them, you're not telling them, but instead you're asking them open-ended guiding questions where they have to do the thinking. So the students would say, um, they would know to go to insert, to go to shape, and then they would find the heart. Some of my students were so smart and made me so proud because they would actually take their heart and put it on top of my heart because they said, well, this will be easier so that I can figure out how to make it exactly the same size as yours. So I was so proud of them for that. Then they knew to go into the paint can, change the color, they knew to make the lines black, and then they would move their heart over here. And then I would ask them, I'd say, oh, I did a really good job. And then I would kind of comment, you know, I noticed something's different about your heart and my heart. Do you notice what's different? And then I would ask them guided questions kind of, because initially the outline of the heart is usually like a grayish color. So I'd say, hmm, looks like the colors of the outside of our hearts are different. How can we fix that? And then they would say, oh, go here. And then I said, now what do you notice? And they're like, my line is thinner than yours. So um, they would know to go here. And then I would sometimes I would help them because sometimes they didn't know. So I would just say, okay, go back to the top and right next to where you just changed the color and the lines, there's another bar. And then they would kind of find it and figure it out. So now the hearts look the same and then they would know to do the writing. So then again, they would know to go to here, insert it, and then write happy Valentine's Day. 
And then again, building some executive functioning skills, I would say, okay, well, what's different about your writing from my writing? And they would know, well, mine's not like in the middle like yours. So we would know to go over here. Then they would say, okay, well, the color is different. So they would know to change the color and the font is different. So they knew to fix the font. And then they would say, okay, well, mine isn't as big as yours. So they knew to kind of play around with, whoops, play around with this and sort of figure out the size and stretching it out and putting it in the middle so that it looked just like mine. So once they completed that activity, we would go to the next slide and then the students would see the writing, what are you grateful for? So again, before they started writing, I would ask them, okay, stop and think, what is the question asking you? It's asking me to say, what am I grateful for and what does that mean? It means, what am I thankful for? Okay, so what are you thankful for? So we would have the conversation and talk about it and then I would tell the students, okay, now write your answer. So then they would write, most of the students um, would write, you know, I am grateful for my family and my friends. And it's great too because, again, this kind of ties into writing and um, all my students actually knew to sort of restate the question in their answers so it's asking me what I'm grateful for and I'm so proud of my students because all of them wrote they started with like a sentence start of I'm grateful for so I was really proud of them for that and so basically that is the end of the activity and then the last slide I just include a visual and this is a good way to ask your students to check their answers and double check does your answer on the first slide look like this answer on the bottom and you can even just go off to the side and have them like scroll up and down because you can still see the the slides over here um, but this is going to be a really fun activity to share with these to create and share with your students i don't yet have this up on my teachers pay teachers page but i'm thinking of including it um, so be on the lookout and i'll post over my instagram page at school psych manage when it's posted but this is just a really great simple um, way to scaffold an intervention with your students scaffold the activity make it more independent assess what do they know as a pretest i would do the same thing as a pretest i would give the students this slide, or if you put it on like a piece of paper, something like this, mix up the order and ask them to put the items in order, what they think the order would be, um, not naming the strategy, because sometimes that kind of gives it away, stop, think, plan, do. Um, but give them the images and ask them to label or organize the images in the order that they think the strategy would go in, and then maybe ask them to write the words um, on a piece of paper or below or something like that just to see what they know before you teach the strategy and then that way you can measure and show what they learn and how did they grow um, at the end of the strategy. So again, I just wanted to share with you a really simple way to scaffold an activity and to assess what your students have learned. I was so, so proud of my students because they all learned the strategy, that the ones that I taught them and um, they, the ones that I worked with on Friday organized it in the right order. They were able to tell me what they mean. They were able to um, tell me the name of each step of the strategy and I could not be more proud as a school psychologist or just someone that you know loves these kids and works with them all the time. So they're doing a lot of really hard working, growing their brains, and I couldn't be more proud. So again, look for this um, and I'll share it soon on my Teachers Pay Teachers and my Instagram um, pages. Again, School Psych Amanda G on both. And let me know what you guys think of this activity. Let me know how you teach your students executive functioning. And um, if not, let me know what you notice for your students, an area of maybe weakness that you want to work with your students on related to building their independence and their EF skills. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Take care, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.